Hey everyone, so this is super cool. We're at Computex 2023, currently at the Streetcom booth, and this is a fully passive case. And it can be a fully passive system within it. So this is something that Streetcom is doing. They're trying to make it actually a product that'll come to market. We've seen passive cases in the past, but normally as sort of a one-off trade show showpiece, and uh, rarely have we seen them actually go to production. Normally cost or difficulty manufacturing become the challenges, but Streetcom does intend to actually bring this to market. And we're gonna go over how it all works. It's got a pumpless dual loop system that's really interesting. It has a massive, basically, radiator on the top uh, and a lot of other cool features we're gonna be talking about. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid Freezer 2 liquid coolers, now including an ARGB model in the lineup. The Liquid Freezer series has been a top performer in our benchmark for years now, and Arctic has continually fine-tuned its products even post-launch with things like kits for Ryzen, ARGB fans for new flare, and new radiator sizes. The company also has its brand new MX6 thermal paste on the market now. Learn more at the links in the description below. So first of all, Streetcom, you might know the name from the open bench table. We actually use several of them in our lab at home base. Uh, open bench table and Streetcom partnered several years ago. They worked together to make the stuff. So I think they both sell their own branded version of an open bench table or a Streetcom table. And uh, that's maybe where you've seen them before in some of our content. For this thing though, so it's called the SG10 uh, and we'll get to the price. It's gonna be high because it's a lot of metal and the way it's constructed is pretty interesting. So you've got this longer form factor, almost like a Raven length case with some extra width to it. And they're mounting the motherboard and the GPU over here diagonally to a set of rails. Technically, there's a little bit of play in there where you can move, uh, not a whole lot, but there's some more on this direction than the other. Either way though, the intent of it is one part display and one part function. For the loops, the way this works, they're shipping it with this component for the CPU. There's another on the other side for the GPU, and uh, this is pumpless. So it does have a refrigerant in there, but the way it's working is all just natural physics processes. So there's actually, there's an evaporator and a condenser side where the liquid or the vapor as it evaporates, comes up as a vapor, hits a pair of tubes up here that we'll show you a shot of. That connects to a bunch of, I, uh, earlier I kept accidentally calling them heat pipes. They are not technically heat pipes, they're copper tubes. So they've got four discrete tubes that make multiple loops back and forth. And those tubes carry either the, the liquid or the vapor, depending on what point it is in the pipeline. So that's how the cooling works. The distinction between copper tube and heat pipe is pretty simple. Uh, heat pipe is a much more complex thing because you normally center, or weave, or mesh inside the heat pipe. Don't need that here because uh, the approach is different for cooling. So those loop back and forth through this massive aluminum fin stack. Streetcom does have another version of this they've been playing around with that goes for copper instead. And they don't currently have the numbers to talk about what's the difference between the two. For smaller scale in the past, we've seen copper versus aluminum on say, uh, I don't remember who made it, but there used to be this low profile cooler. It was a very low, small difference. When you're at this size though, I don't know. We're hoping we can get one to test, even if it's just a demo in the future. This one is aluminum, uh, other than the copper tubes though. So on this side, also very interesting. This is the GPU. Their intent is to ship with VRM plates, like you see here. So you would use thermal pads, connect the VRM heat sink to the MOSFETs and doctors, all your typical VRM components. This adds a layer of complexity to manufacturing where because the user is stripping down the video card, they can only support certain types, obviously a video card. So uh, it will be something where you'll probably have to check a support list, make sure they've got the adapter kit for you, and that's how that would work. The CPU is simpler though, you just, I mean, you just mount it to cool the CPU. So uh, actually we also have this kit over here to show. This is an example of uh, a basically a test model of what you were seeing on the other side. So you've got VRM heat sinks, you've got the plates, you've got a contact patch for uh, the actual pumpless cold plate or the contact for the GPU. So I think that covers most of the actual cooling solution. For the rest of the materials, this is steel, so it fits the theme, but this becomes structural. And on the, the rest, these pieces here, these accent pieces are extruded aluminum. Uh, and then the bottom's got an acrylic plate just for some extra flair to it. But I think that covers the sort of hard functional basics. The I.O. plate can be relocated. 
basically anywhere within these channels because that's how it's built to mount within these steel support plates. And then, unfortunately, we didn't bring our Fluke RSE 600 thermal camera, so I can't show you, but it is actually radiating a good amount of heat, and they've got a, on the back of it here, they've got uh, effectively a, just a power meter where you can see it's running a 672 watt heat load right now. And then if we rotate over on this side, there's a hardware info readout of some sensors. So no play in the CPU, but the GPU is more or less under control, and then you would tune, obviously, as you go. But even uh, being able to support a, I guess, a 13900K and a 4080, uh, or come close to it, is, is, uh, is pretty good for something that's passively cooled. Although they do have a fan in the power supply right now, but that is up to you. So I think that covers most of the SG10 price. The price target, probably about $1,000, which makes sense if you think about it from a materials perspective. Does it make sense to use your system? Uh, how wealthy are you? I guess that's really the question. But it is a huge amount of aluminum. It's going to be expensive to ship from where it's manufactured and to you. Uh, a copper variant, I don't even want to guess at what the price of that would be. It would be insane just because uh, you're adding weight and a more expensive material. But this is something we want to test. We'd have to do a special one-off for it because obviously you're modifying the GPU to do the test uh, so it wouldn't fit into our normal test suite. But we could still look at what's the maximum potential of it. So I think that covers most of what I wanted to talk about other than I guess on the back here, last detail for you is uh, these are electrical isolators underneath the mounting plate to the GPU. So that white pad right there is I think technically not a thermal pad, it's just to isolate it from electrical contact. So that's the SG10, really cool. I, I like it, seeing a demo that's actually intended to be made into a product is always much more exciting than seeing a demo that quietly disappears. Der Bauer, there are many demos I have seen of yours that I would like to see become products, uh, and we'll probably see more of the show. Hopefully they become real. The last couple of things that Streetcom had at their booth, so they've got this like gauge cluster that's kind of interesting. They're calling this View One, and these are analog gauges with an e-ink display. So that's kind of the interesting aspect of this, where uh, Streetcom noticed that everybody's going for RGB everything, all, the, all places, all the time, and instead wanted to get back to semi-analog roots with that e-ink display. So you can reprogram these to say whatever you want. Now, they're original, I'm just looking at this trying to see if it's moving based on what I'm saying or not, but I don't think it is. The original intent is to have this hooked up. Uh, you could do either via cable or via Wi-Fi. So for example, it could connect to that passive system we were looking at. And then at the top, they've got CPU power, GPU temperature, GPU power, GPU temperature. But as I was talking more and more with Streetcom and looking at all these things, many of which I personally wouldn't use, the question came about of what really is the target audience? And the takeaway I got from it was this is the type of product that kind of matches that Raspberry Pi user where hopefully you just have ideas, things you want to do, or this gives you ideas, and then you deploy it. So less of a company telling you this is what it's made for and more of a here's a tool, you figure it out, which is always kind of cool. They're planning to do three of the View One individual gauges. So each of these is an individual unit three of those plus a hub, that'll be a hundred bucks. And then, uh, I don't know if we have a shot of the backside or not, but I'll turn it around. On the backside, you can see they're all daisy chained one to the other, and then it's just a single USB connection running down here, I think to the to the hub or, or I guess to power ultimately. Uh, so that's the view on stuff, kind of interesting. But this was another of Streetcom's products on display. So this is the ZS800. Uh, it is, originally I looked at it and I thought, is it just a passive power supply with a fan that you can strap to the power supply? But no, it is actually a normal but very unique in some ways power supply in that if you look back here, the connectors are socketing straight to the PCB. So rather than being soldered in at the back of the power supply and sticking out a couple extra millimeters, they're socketing straight, uh, soldered straight to the PCB. You connect these in uh, as usual with modularity, modular power supplies. And uh, then that comes and terminates over here to another unique connector. So on the power supply side, it's functionally ATX 12VO. But then on this side, they are terminating the 12VO, uh, I believe it's a 10 pin top of my head, 
to an 8-pin here, and that's an 8-pin ATX, carries everything you need for ATX, then terminates in a standard 24-pin. And as for this smaller 4-pin on the corner, that's a SATA cable. So uh, if you've seen ATX 12VO power supplies, things like that, uh, the, the SATA would typically stick out of the motherboard and they're trying to resolve it by sticking it out of that PCB instead. So uh, ZS800 will have a user serviceable fan. So we have a shot of me pulling this out. It's a little tight in there, but the power supply is exactly 125 millimeters. Fan's 120. It's a by 15 though, it's so 120 by 15. I don't think they're planning to ship with the knock to a fan. It just happened to be in there. Uh, and then you can just screw it in. Easy to, to pull and replace as a user. 800 watts for this one and they're in the sort of final rounds of uh, testing and production. So no release date yet, but that'll come out soon. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net or patreon.com slash gamersaccess to help us out directly, and we'll see you all next time.